What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be kind of taking a break from our film breakdowns and moving on to a mock draft. We're going to, like I said in uh, the last video I think, we're going to be doing more of these as we get close to the draft. Obviously once the draft order is set I'll do one and we're just going to do one round. I'll probably do maybe two or three rounds like the week of the draft. And for trades, we'll just do free-for-all so I can make trades without having to get all the... Just so I don't have to have it equal out, you know? And I will be using my own big board because uh, the big board on here kind of sucks ass. Uh, I, I cursed for no reason. <laughs> there was no need for that. Anyways, so we're going to kind of be shaking it up. We're going to imagine like the Bears are moving on from Justin Fields, which is... I mean, personally, I would just because they're rebuilding and they're going to have to re-sign Justin Fields soon and he'll be expensive. So if you're already rebuilding, just get a QB on a rookie contract. And usually I would have the Bears trading back with like, you know, the Giants or somebody here. But for the sake of switching it up, at least for me, because obviously I've never done one of these on this channel yet, but I've done several in my own time. So I'm going to be going... Drake May. Uh, always Caleb Williams to the Bears, whatever, but I am not a Caleb Williams fan. I mean, I'm an Oklahoma fan. I liked him while he was here, but then he thought that he was the second coming of Jesus. So I think he might fall a little bit, shake it up a little bit more to Washington. I mean, you got your pick. You, you take the three quarterbacks, and which one do you like the most? And if you think that he'll go number one, maybe you trade up to number one. But we'll just imagine that they don't here, and we'll give him Jaden Daniels. Shaking that one up, too. So, I mean, I really like Jaden Daniels. Very versatile. He can run. He can throw. Uh, he does not have the injury questions like some other QBs, like Michael Penix. But, I mean, Michael Penix is not going to be a first-round guy. But Jaden Daniels, very explosive, flashy. Shows good accuracy. Obviously won the Heisman, but that doesn't really that doesn't really mean anything based on your skills. Sorry. That was uh, my quick ASMR break. <laughs> like a minute into the video. And yeah, we're going to be going kind of quick. I'm not going to go as in-depth. Uh, Caleb Williams, number three to the Patriots. Obviously, I don't... I think it's fair to say by this point that Mac Jones and or Bailey Zappi will not ever do anything. I mean, it's fair. You can definitely say they won't ever win a Super Bowl, but I think it's fair to say that they will not take you to the playoffs. And, I mean, Caleb Williams, he's a good player. Has This last year has shown to be kind of inconsistent against better t opponents and teams. But is that on him? Is that on the O-line, the receivers, the coaching? There's a lot of things, but... Depending on how well he does at the combine, interviews, all that kind of stuff, that'll that'll solidify whether or not he goes first overall. Number four to Arizona, no change up here. Everybody's been doing it. It makes the most sense. Marvin Harrison Jr., great player, crazy good player. And if it weren't for him, Malik Neighbors would be the number one receiver. But I mean, it's it's Marvin Harrison Jr. He's just he's just that guy. So. I mean, if you're Arizona, you're sticking with Kyler Murray. You don't have a number one number one receiver that can win on the outside. I mean, Marquise Brown or Hollywood Brown, he's more of that slot kind of guy. Marvin Harrison Jr. is he can play all over and win from anywhere on the field. And Chargers here, obviously no quarterback, maybe a receiver. I mean, they got all their all their receivers at the top of their depth chart will be. Like, they have expiring contracts soon. So, is it a receiver? Maybe. Is it a tight end? Maybe. Is it a tackle, since all of them fell to you? Maybe. But I think when you're factoring in that you need both a tackle and a receiver, why not get somebody that can do both at a high level in Brock Bowers? Uh, I have given them Olu Fashanu, Joe Alt at times. And keep in mind, this is on my own time. And a receiver, I haven't given him a receiver yet, but I feel like that is very much in the realm of possibility that they take another receiver based on how Quentin Johnston 
I was going to say what he did this year, but it was not much. <laughs> he has struggled, but, I mean, to be fair, it's his rookie year. He was developmental to start off. I mean, that was his whole thing was he's a developmental guy. And if you can develop him into what he can be, then you have something. But if he just stays at the level he's at now, you don't have much. So getting a player, because, I mean, you don't have a number one tight end. I mean, you got Gerald Everett, but his contract's expiring, and he's older, and he's not even amazing. He's not even that good. He's just decent. And Brock Bowers is just an elite player. I have him top three on my big board. He, just a great player. Can run, can catch, can run after the catch. Uh, I said run, can catch. I meant he can block. My Apple Watch went off. Um, he can block, he can catch. I'm getting a little distracted. Uh, yeah, great fit for the Chargers. Really just bring that offense to another level. So, I mean, I could see him trading back here. Maybe a team wants to jump the Giants for a receiver. Maybe the Bears move back up. Uh, do they have the draft capital to do that is the real question. Um, not really. <laughs> not really in this year's draft. Where's their second round pick? Did... Oh, they gave that up for um, uh, Montez Sweat. That's right. Uh, yeah, Giants at six. It's got to be Malik Neighbors. If I don't think you take any of these quarterbacks at six, certainly not Penix or Bo Nix. Probably not J.J. McCarthy. Sorry. I'm still kind of sick. Um, yeah, Malik Neighbors, I mean, you don't have... <laughs> you don't have a number one receiver on roster. Sterling Shepard's probably leaving. Darius Slayton is... He exists. Um, you obviously drafted Kadarius Tony, thinking he could be that guy. He wasn't. Um, you got, what, Del Hodges? Uh, Isaiah Hodges? He's He exists as well. Just not a lot of great players. Jalen Hyatt obviously could be a decent player in the future, but, I mean, you don't expect a lot out of him. Uh, Titans at seven, all the tackles fell. It's got to be a tackle. Probably not a receiver here. It just has to be a tackle. And based on what they want to do, which is run the damn football, it's got to be Joe Walt. Um, Olu Fashanu is a lot of people's number one tackle. Uh, I'm not doing a film breakdown on them because, I mean, tackle's less, a lot more boring than looking at, like, a receiver edge rusher. So I did tackle like scouting and scouting reports videos on my not videos but just scouting reports on my own time and I like Joe Alt a lot more than I like Olu Fushanu and I really I really love Talise Fuaga is it Talise Talise I'm pretty sure it's Talise Fuaga or Talise I gotta learn the it's Polynesian or Hawaiian or Samoan or something is that racist probably not but I really like Joe Alt out of the top two I'd put him I'd go Joe Alt Fashanu, Fuaga, Mims, Latham, Fatanu, and then Patrick Paul. I really do like Patrick Paul too. But Joe Alt, more of uh, he gets more of a run blocker and pass blocker, while Fashanu is more of just a pass blocker. I mean, Mims is more of just a pass blocker. Fuaga can do it all. I mean, I could see Fuaga maybe being the second tackle off the board depending on how far the tackles fall, how much teams do or don't like Fashanu and Alt. I mean, not that Fashanu's a bad player. He's just, I'd say he's a little bit more developmental than some people think and starting to get kind of maybe a little bit overrated. Uh, he's still a good player, though. Atlanta at 8. Um, I mean, obviously none of the quarterbacks are going to be taken here. Uh, one second, got to fix my big board. Uh, I'm kind of like eliminating players as I go through. So, got to be an edge rusher. And, I mean, I'm kind of doing this draft based off team need at the moment. Obviously, free agency will change everything. But team need based off right now. And my big board, my number one player at that position. And what I think could happen. Kind of a mixture of all three of those. So, and what they should do, obviously. So Atlanta, not going to take a quarterback. You need help on the defense. Is it corner? Maybe. Is it edge? Probably. You need D-line help. And the best way to help the secondary is to get a good pass rush. And based on 
my big board and team need. It's going to be an edge rusher. So based on my big board, I have Leatu Latu at one, but I think that he will fall a little bit. Um, and kind of what I think will happen, probably Dallas Turner. High upside, needs to put on some weight, needs to get stronger. But if he gets that done, that was phrased weird. I mean, NFL teams have got size coaches, uh, strength and conditioning coaches, all that kind of stuff. So he can do it, absolutely. And I think if he does that, he will elevate his game to a whole nother level. And I think he'd be a great fit for Atlanta. Uh, Bears at 9. Drake May, we gave him. I talk like Yoda. Is it a receiver? Probably. I mean, DJ Moore, I don't think he's under contract for much longer. I assume they'll extend him. Uh, Darnell Mooney will probably be gone. And that's about it. <laughs> so, is it receiver? Is it defense help? I think it's best player available. And for me... The number one player remaining on my board is Rome Odunze. And I think I think that fits pretty nice. I like the fit. Great yak guy. He's athletic. He's fast. He's big. He can pretty much do it all. I like him a lot. And it just sucks that this is such a good receiver class that he gets kind of overshadowed by the top two. So if the other two didn't exist, I mean, obviously he'd be, if one and two didn't exist, number three would be number one. But he's a great athlete, great player. Will probably be a top 10 pick. Jets at 10. Got to be a tackle. Olufashanu somehow falls. Maybe uh, I should have gave him to the Bears, but I think you're pretty set at tackle with Braxton Jones and Darnell Wright. Now, should I have given Atlanta the tackle? Probably not. I think they're pretty good with McGarry and what's-his-nuts. So uh, if Ashanu falls to the Jets at 10... Absolutely, you dive on that. No question. Need a tackle, he fits. Pass protector, keep Aaron Rodgers safe. Maybe get him a walk or two or a wheelchair, that might help. Minnesota at ooh, Minnesota at 11. Need a quarterback, but do you take any of these guys? I think this is going to be our first trade down scenario. And, hold up, i got to fix my big board. So a team could probably be jumping up past Denver for an edge rusher because I think Denver does kind of need uh, a good edge rusher and I think I'm going to make things interesting I'm going to have Indianapolis with Minnesota uh, where's Indy 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 and Minnesota so we'll just do a straight up trade I don't want to get all the details in because I don't <laughs> that's not the point of the video the point is I think they will move up I mean I could see the Vikings moving down based on team need, acquire more draft capital, build depth. So, makes sense. Indianapolis trading up. Uh, I'm going to go Chop Robinson. I don't know why I had his name as like Damarius or whatever because he goes by Chop. So, Chop Robinson here. Great player. I love Chop Robinson. I love him. Twitched athlete. Crazy athletic instinctual I think that's a big word to use to describe him and I like big words they make me sound smarter so instinctual and it's fun to say kind of rolls off the tongue but it's like a tongue twister anyways he just seems like a cult I mean maybe it's the logo maybe it's the white helmet that they wear in Penn State something <laughs> sorry he just seems like a cult they kind of need edge help uh, quitty pay has just existed and not really much on the other side. So you probably don't re-sign Quiddy Pay. Let him walk. Chop Robinson immediately boosts your defense. And he's developmental. Has a pretty high... I mean, he's got a decent floor. Crazy high ceiling. I love Chop Robinson. Denver at 12. Leatu Latu. It's got to be. I also love Leatu Latu. Does a lot of things right. Obviously, every time you mention him, you're going to mention his injuries. But... If you steer clear of the injuries, you have a stud. He is a crazy, crazy player. If it weren't for the injuries, he'd absolutely go in the top 10. I mean, what would our first defensive player go? Dallas Turner, yeah. Not a lot of defense. This is our third defensive player, third edge rusher, funnily enough. Broncos, defense is very overrated. Everybody says it's one of the best in the league. It's really not. I mean, their secondary is decent, but other than that, linebackers, eh. Edge rushers, eh, D-tackle, eh. 
So not <laughs> not a lot there in the front seven. So bring in some help. He can rush the passer. He can make an impact in the run game. Leatu Latu is a great player. Uh, Raiders, seen it a lot. Makes the most sense. Nate Wiggins, press coverage. He can do literally whatever. I assume press coverage. I really have not watched a lot of Nate Wiggins' film. So we're just going to hope I say that and don't sound too dumb. Uh, I've watched a lot of the other film, and I know I got a pretty good idea on most of the players. But Nate Wiggins, I mean, Raiders need corner. I don't see any of these other guys being a Raider. Maybe they take a tackle. But Nate Wiggins will go earlier than a lot of people seem to think. So makes the most sense for Vegas. New Orleans at 14. I mean, that kind of rhymes. There's something there. Edge, I mean, I feel like you you don't need to go edge. You don't have to feel pressured to go into edge. You got uh, Carl Granderson. Uh, who's their other edge rusher? You hope you can develop Peyton Turner some more. Uh, Isaiah Foskey. You got two developmental guys. Maybe one of them takes a step up. Give them something to play for. Have them, you know, fighting. Not, not obviously fighting, but like competing against each other for that edge rusher on the other side um receiver that is listed as a team need i think it's got to be tackle i mean ryan ramchek he's got questions of retiring with his knees uh trevor penning has not done anything granted he was injured his rookie year but uh if you have one tackle with serious injury concerns and one tackle that's not good you probably should take a tackle, and I think that's Talise Fuaga. Talise Fuaga, I gotta figure it out. I'll watch, because when I watched this film, I didn't listen to it with the sound on, so, well, I wouldn't listen to it with the sound off either. Um, I'll listen to it with the sound on next time, see how they pronounce it, if they ever do. I don't know why they announce his name, but I love, I love Fuaga. He's got great feet. Um, pause. <laughs> He's got like basketball feet. Like he can shuffle. Shuffle, drop the hips, keep your head and eye, head and eyes up, but while also keeping your hands, you know, ready to go. I guess if you play basketball, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Minnesota at 15 after trading down. Uh, edge rusher is very much in the realm of possibilities. Uh, they need Jared Verse. He'd be a great player. Daniel Hunter is getting a little bit older. Could use a cornerback. Could use really anything on the defense, eh? Uh, Cooper DeGene, I mean, a white a white safety corner guy would be a very good fit for the Vikings. I mean, they love Harrison Smith, eh? But I think it will be Jared Verse. They do not have, I can't, <laughs> they do not have a lot of uh, solidified edge players. And Jared Verse, powerful, powerful guy. Great hands, powerful arms, run game impact. Great fit for Minnesota. Uh, he will not probably like going from Florida to Minnesota. I think that's how I'm going to pronounce Minnesota forever. Seahawks, I don't think you need to take edge, especially with the highest looking edge rusher being Braylon Trice. D tackle, probably, maybe. Uh, Got to fix my big board again because I forget how to delete things. Um, Seattle, maybe a quarterback. I mean, it'd be funny to give JJ McCarthy to Washington. That would be very funny. Maybe they trade back. Let's see, who's the top of the board? Cooper DeGene, McKinstry, Coleman. Um, let's have a team jump for the for tackle over the Jags and the Bengals. Let's have Ooh, Miami would be interesting. Miami would be interesting. Could they take a quarterback? Maybe. Probably not. Um I think I'm going to play it safe. Let's have the Rams trade up. Uh, Lar and C. And, yeah, we'll just do straight up. Uh, Latham. Uh, I've not watched his film yet. Uh, I've only got to... I, I say uh too much. I'm sorry. I've only got to Joe Alt, Fashanu, Fawaga, Mims, and a little bit of Patrick Paul. So, I've not seen Latham yet. I haven't seen him in depth yet, but I assume he's powerful, pretty good guy. Um, Latham's a cool last name. So, yeah. Jags at 
17. Protect Trevor Lawrence, please, for the love of all that is holy in this world. Mims, uh, athletic, gets kind of lost in the run game sometimes, but pretty good in pass pro, and that's what you need is you need better than pretty good, and I think he could be good if you develop him right. Bengals, depending on who they lose in free agency, if they lose T. Higgins, if they lose T. Higgins and or Tyler Boyd, probably receiver, but assuming you retain both of them, uh, no, let's make it fun. Keon Coleman. That is fun, fun, fun pairing with Jamar Chase. Um, yeah, you could lose T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd in free agency. Yes, you need tackle, but only having one good receiver, kind of, it's, I mean, that's your whole offense, is your three good receivers, decent running back, and an okay tight end. That has been their offense for the past two, three years. And... You lose T. Higgins, well, Keon Coleman is a lot like T. Higgins in his build, in his play style, in his aggressiveness, in his hands, just everything. is Keon Coleman is a lot like T. Higgins in those ways. So if you lose him, bring in a guy like him to replace him. Seattle uh, had him trading down. I think it's Jerzon Newton. Probably don't have Leonard Williams long term, and he's not crazy good. So... Keep rebuilding your D-line. Keep rebuilding your defense. Maybe not a quarterback here, but that might be coming up. Maybe. They could take J.J. McCarthy. That'd be a lot of fun. Sending the guy that beat Washington to Washington. I mean, I don't know if I'd say McCarthy beat him, but, you know, that's an argument for another time. Pittsburgh. Kool-Aid McKinstry somehow falling to 20. Give him McKinstry. He just kind of seems like he'd be a stealer. I don't know, maybe it's the cool name. (laughs) Pun intended. It was not. But need corner. Patrick Peterson is your best corner, and he's about as old as the Great Wall of China, but does not cover like it, unfortunately. So immediately step in, play on the other side of Joey Porter Jr., and you got your long-term cornerback solutions. Is it quarterback? It could be, but we'll assume they like Kenny Pickett for some reason. Miami tackles, I mean, protect Tua. If Tua is your guy, I still think he is. Um, uh, ooh, Graham Barton would be interesting. Inside, outside flexibility, more inside. Probably not defense. Not a lot of good defensive players available. Maybe take a corner. That'd be interesting. They have corner pretty low on their needs that's I mean Jalen Ramsey is getting up there he's expensive who knows how long much longer he'll be there Xavier Howard is just injured and I don't know the word old not good declining that's the word he's declining slowly but surely so is it corner I think you keep your offense rolling Troy <coughs> you gotta get a drink Sorry, still kind of sick. Keep your offense rolling. Keep your run game rolling. Build around your offense. Fuck the defense. (laughs) Uh, Philadelphia. Graham Barton. (laughs) Losing Jason Kelsey. Your guards are mid. Maybe move Cam Jurgens back into center. Graham Barton plays guard. I mean, who else is going to do the tush push other than a big boy like Graham Barton? Um, I have not been updating my big board. It's it's okay. I don't really need to do that for a first round draft, mock draft. Houston Texans. Um, maybe receiver could lose Nico Collins soon. I don't know if it's this year or next year his contract expires. I think it's next No, he's twenty twenty, right? I think it's this next after this next year. Could go receiver. I mean get another playmaker with Collins and Tank Dell. Maybe O line. Just keep refreshing your insurance on CJ Stroud. Maybe keep building up your defense. And I think mm, I'm gonna make it fun. I'm gonna go Kenyon Mitchell. Uh, I have not broken down his film, but I've seen his highlights. And highlights are very different than film because oh man. I watched his highlights. He never missed a tackle. 
like yeah it's a highlight reel so i mean take that with a grain of salt but looks to be a great player very very fast get a playmaker on the other side of Derek stingley so keep your keep reloading that defense and eventually you'll have something um why why are the texans picking lower than dallas they're not eliminated at the time of recording and they are okay that's interesting i don't know how accurate this uh this order is cowboys i mean <laughs> what do you even do can you draft a head coach is that is that possible i think you get another receiver in that offense brandon cooks is there michael gallup exists tight end you're probably good o-line maybe well that, that could make sense now which o-lineman seems like a cowboy Tyler Guyton, get another T name. I think they have like three dudes named Tyler or Tyron. So get another tie in there. So you got four ties on the O line. And I think Patrick Paul will go first round. I don't know if he, if I'll have him going in this draft because I'm kind of going as we go through. But I really do like Patrick Paul. Uh, Green Bay at 25, maybe a tackle. Jordan Morgan seems like a Packer. That name just screams, I'm a Packer. Maybe not receiver. Well, obviously not receiver. It's the Packers. Cooper DeGene. That could be interesting. Get another white first-round defensive player. Uh, I don't know. I think every time we talk about anybody talks about Cooper DeGene, he's white, in case you didn't know. Terry and Arnold, ooh, he's still on the board. Uh, I have a 21 on my big board. I think he might end up going a little higher. I mean, it's an offensive draft. Receivers, tackles, out the wazoo. You got your four main edge rushers. And there's just a lot of top-heavy guys in some positions, like tackle. Top-heavy after, like, after this, Kyron. I always forget how to pronounce his last name. He's pretty big. and He's decent. After him, though, it's kind of a fall-off at receiver. It's just loaded throughout. Running backs, there. I don't think there will be a first-round running back this year. Maybe Blake Corum sneaks in. Receiver, I mean, not receiver, quarterback, very, very top-heavy. Because after one of the, which, whoever's the last one off the board, it's going to be a while before we see another one of these guys. Edge, kind of, kind of top-heavy as well. D-tackle, kind of mid. Linebacker. It's just not even heavy. Corner, pretty stacked. But, yeah, Green Bay, we'll go tackle. Jordan Morgan seems like a Packer. He just screams Packer. Uh, Bucks. Bucks, Bucks, what do the Bucks do? Baker, I think you re-sign Baker. Give him maybe like a two-year deal. See what you got with the rest of your team with solid quarterback play. Um, could go corner. Your corners are kind of mid, getting up there in age. Maybe receiver. It's corner or receiver. And based on Terry and Arnold still being on the board, I'm going to go Terry and Arnold. Great player. Could go before Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think there's a very good chance he will. It just depends on what you want more from. I mean, they have two different play styles, so it's whatever you want more. Arizona at 27, gave him Marvin Harrison Jr. earlier. Um, I would go edge rusher, but none of the good ones are on the board. Maybe Chris Braswell sneaks into the first round. Probably not. Um, I mean, with Cooper DeGene being on the board, you got to go with him. Great player, can play all over the secondary. Returned kicks for Iowa. Crazy athletic, sneaky athleticism, real hard worker. First guy in, last one out mentality. <laughs> the Julian Edelman of the defensive backfield. Kansas City, as a Chiefs fan, what would I want with how the board is shaped out to be? Michael, no. Um, receiver, maybe Brian Thomas. Um, might go corner if you lose Legereus Sneed. Maybe D-tackle if you lose Chris Jones. Keep your defense going. 
I think in the first round, at least, it's got to be a tackle or a receiver. And it's going to be unpopular. As a Chiefs fan, watching Jawan Taylor hold or jump off sides every other play makes me want to just punt a toddler. And then watching Donovan Smith suck ass and be hurt at the same time, which pick one and stick with it. You can't do both. Uh, it's got to be tackle. I'm going Patrick Paul. Receiver, I get it. I get it. But I think that the receiver class is good enough where you can get decent uh, value down the board, like a Tez Walker, a Jalen Polk, a Malachi Corley, uh, Roman Wilson. Michael Sturdivant's not even in the draft. He's going back. Uh, Malik Washington. Moose Muhammad, I, who I really like. I mean, there's a lot of guys down the board who you can get. And maybe you double dip in the second and third round. Maybe. But based on how their offense is working maybe if you didn't have her see rice you'd probably take one but with how their offense is i know receiver 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 protecting mahomes is more important than people like to think buffalo brian thomas losing gabe davis who's he's gabe davis i mean fantasy legend some weeks but not a whole lot on paper that they could use Maybe they go secondary. Maybe a Tyler Newbin? No. no. That was just a quick thought that went through my mind that left my mouth for some reason. Uh, Lions. I mean, how about the Lions season? That's truly, truly remarkable, to say the least. And we're going to be fun. J.J. McCarthy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like J.J. McCarthy all right. Probably won't go high. He'll be kind of that. He'll be that pick that when it's announced, he makes the announcers go, "Whoa!" Like, like go back to 2011 when uh, the Titans took Jake Locker, and just listen to the announcers' reaction. That's that's what the JJ McCarthy pick will be. Now, hopefully, he doesn't end up like Jake Locker, but I mean, Michigan guy, keep him in Michigan. I mean, he didn't have to throw it a lot because you know they had Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards. Is he even listed, or is he going back for a year? Is he returning? Interesting. Um, yeah, he can make some crazy, crazy throws. Got a good arm, good accuracy. He just, his draft stock's not going to be high because he didn't have to throw the ball. So the combine and his pro day will determine a lot of how high or low he goes. San Fran, it's got to be a tackle. Kingsley Suamataia fits. The bill, you got Trent Williams, yeah, but he's ancient, and who else do you have? Not much. Pretty self-explanatory pick. Don't need a lot of other positions, really. Maybe could get some more corner depth. Uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with depth at any defensive position. Maybe it's another receiver. Uh, maybe it's interior. Eh, none of these guys will go. Cooper BB, I think, is returning, or was that another dude? I think I'm thinking, thinking of, I think Donovan Smith. That's who I'm thinking of. Shit. I'm getting names. There's too many Donovans in my mind right now. Pause. Ravens. They list corner and receiver. Um, I mean, Ronnie Stanley, he's decent. But you got Morgan Moses on the other side who's not good. <laughs> very, very much not good. Corner, I mean, Lassiter, Kalen King, Rank, Rake, Rake Straw. His name's hard to say. Edge, D-tackle. I think at edge you try to develop a Jabo and Owe some more. Uh, the, the double O's. D-tackle. If you don't re-sign... Uh, what's his name? Oh, it's Matabuike. Matabuike. If you don't re-sign him, you probably go D-tackle just to keep a presence there. And if you don't get him, maybe bring in a Leonard Taylor or Chris Jenkins. Maybe even a Byron Murphy. Um, shoot, man. I'm not going to take a quarterback, obviously. This is tough. This is honestly tough. I think you go best player available because you don't have a lot of needs. And for me, that best available is it's between, in my mind, it's between Lassiter and Leonard Taylor. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. 
a safety. No, <laughs> no, they don't need safety. I was thinking, I forgot some names. We'll go Lassiter. Um, we'll just look at it. Lassiter, I mean, kind of boosted his draft stock this year. Did better than Keely Ringo did, and Keely Ringo's more athletic. So that that's that says something. I don't know what it says, but it says something. But yeah, this is the mock draft. Probably not my best way of presenting it. <laughs> uh, didn't talk the best through it, but I mean, to be fair, I didn't do well in my first uh, film breakdown video, and I got better. <coughs> Sorry. And yeah, I just saw 31 views on my Leatu Latu video. Makes me happy. Very happy. So yeah, this is the mock draft. A few shockers, a few curve curveballs. Um, a lot of unpopular picks potentially. But yeah, that is the mock draft. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Show me some love. I would appreciate it too. I was going somewhere with that. I had it phrased in my head. Didn't come out right. I would appreciate it so much if you guys would do that. Now it sounds like I'm begging. Um, it, it would just make me happy. Make my day. Make me smile when I see that I have two subscribers instead of one. So yeah, thanks again for watching and have a great one.